Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Want to talk to you real quick about wiring up that little structure I did. It's like the back of a diesel trailer. We grounded it and we had that cord for generator. It's the fourth part of that video in January of 2018. You want to first start an article 445 under your generators and read through that. Okay, overcurrent protection, what you're doing. Then you also want to look at in your code article, just in your general receptacles, for your tamper-proof rating, 20 amp rating, WR rating. Um, you also want to be attentive to what kind of cord you're running. In this case, we're in 400.5A and we were at JSOOW, which basically talks about is it extra hard duty rated. To know if that cord was right, um, you're also going to turn to in here. It's going to be, I've got a handbook, uh, by the way, 2017. So that's page uh, 409, but a JSSOW cord is gonna state in here what it's rated for, if it's gonna be oil, thermos, uh, thermally rated, um, also wet, dry, damp, extra hard duty, things of that nature, okay? So in our case, it was rated for that. And then we come over to here and see that a B rating for two conductor is gonna be in this column here, and at a 12 gauge is good for 25 amps. You can also check in here how many number of current carrying conductors if you get a bigger cord than that four to six, six current carrying conductors also ties to 31015 b3a page 259 which you guys are mostly familiar with that it used to be called 31016 until they change it like idiots again 310 is going to also talk about your temperature limitations 31015 and your impacity this is how many of your conductors so when you're running um for instance how many current carrying conductors in a conduit um this right and this is going to be your triplex rating we don't need to worry about that so your ambient temperature rating if you're 30 to 80 degree 86 degrees fahrenheit 30 degrees celsius 86 degrees fahrenheit as soon as you get to about 100 degrees in colorado then you'd be concerned you also look at how many current carrying conductors are in a conduit. Like I told you, that ties to 400.5. You're also going to be considering your neutral. Which that's going to be... Right in here. Sorry lost my place there your neutral conductors if they're going to be considered constant consistent of nonlinear loads in this case if you have a 110 circuit that's neutral and hot there is nothing to balance that neutral between a split phase or l1 l2 to carry back the current on the other leg three phase also has its uh your symbol 1.73 is the square root of 3 that you're dealing with on your neutral and so in this case it's just a 110 leg so you do have to consider your neutral's current carrying per 31015 uh, B4 you also have to look at when you're looking through this where your conductors um, if there's any adjustment factor if you're in a nipple and in this case, we were not. We were definitely using just a JSOW cord, extra hard duty rated, so it does not have to worry about being protected by a raceway. The other thing all this is going to kick you to is 110.14C. And 110.14.C, the biggest thing that most of you guys have to pay attention to. right here your conductor if it is 100 amps or more in one gauge you automatically assume 75 degrees celsius tying to 310 15. your temperature limitations for below that per article 110.14 c1a is 14 gauge to one gauge is going to be considered in a 60 degree celsius column do not forget to pay attention to that Tying that over to 310, you then can figure out 31015B16, 
that a number 12 gauge copper THWN-2, that's all I ever buy, rating is 90 degrees Celsius column, and that is good to 30 amps. Pay attention to the asterisk mark, which drops you back down here to say pay attention to 240.4D, where your conductors are over current protection limitations for anything smaller than a 10 gauge. So on 240.4D, we're also going to be checking out right here for your overcurrent protective ratings for your smaller conductors of 18 16 gauge 12 gauge is good for 15 or excuse me 20 amps okay you can start to derate at 25 but you're ultimately going to be at 20 because of your breaker size this is page 150 in the handbook the other thing I want you to pay attention to is your grounding there's a code article that I found. Two fifty dot thirty four for vehicle and uh, portable and vehicle mounted generators and permanently installed generators there's as well which would refer you over here to A and then to 250.30 but this is going to refer you to 250.52 for portable generator read through that article and this will talk about your bonding of that vehicle and the frame of that unit like I showed you earlier also going to be talking looking in here for a building structure supplied by feeders and branch circuits we're not doing that underground or overhead pay attention 250.32 and also how you're bonding most everything like I told you there's a bonding jumper involved in all of this okay your bonding jumper will be discussed also it could create a ground ring that might have been a good idea around that whole structure but again they're gonna move that so I don't know how permanently that's gonna be but at least I have a 10-foot ground rod and 250.52, it will be talking about your water pipe, your metal and grounded support structure, ground ring, rod, plate. And then in 250.53, your rod permanently installed, supplementing electrode conductor. Maybe I should add two ground rods driven for that. You could still do that. But bonding jumper right here is where we were talking about that neutral and ground bonding at the first point of disconnect. Again, the generator portable has its own disconnect right then and there shutting off. Keep in mind also that the largest grounding electroconductor per 250.64 states that it's number eight. I always use number six because if you use a number eight, you're technically supposed to protect it in case it might get damaged. So, um, uh, yeah, here it is. Exposed to physical damage, number six shall be therefore then protected or anything lower, smaller than number six. So I just run number six all the time because I don't really care to use an eight. Um, again, guys, read through those code articles. It kind of shows you a general form of that. I guess if I was getting real serious, and trust me, customer doesn't want to pay for it, I would create a ground ring around this and run that. I think that was a number two and nothing smaller. Um, I could look that up again, but you would trench that in and do a circle. So technically a ring means a circle, so that's that tarmac. Um, or I guess you draw, just drive two ground rods. Um, the point being is that's very temporary for what they're using. They could just use an extension cord 10 gauge out from an outlet inside of their shop. But they do want to have a generator there set up to do that. So these are the code articles that I went through to establish this. If you guys have said that I missed something or, hey, I would have thought about this, go ahead and let me know. I appreciate those good inputs. Um, but just want you to know, I do look at the code book, do read through it, do understand the majority of it. I've been reading it for now about 17 years, almost 18. Uh, there is still stuff I miss all the time, but I just got fresh out of class for my PEUs for this new 2017 to 2020 code. And we went through all those applications of ambient temperature, current current conductors, neutrals, how many in a conduit, is it a nipple, is it not? 
Um, 310, 15B, you know, what is that wire rated at? Does it apply to 110.14C if you have to derate it based on its size or impacity? 240.4D stating that's only rated for this amount. And then ultimately, what is it being breakered at? Is it considered continuous duty as well per article definition 100 uh, to upsize the wire? So keep in mind that some of this you're just doing as put, but as the guy asked me, look, this is redneck boot style leg. Could you please make this safe and right? This is as safe as that I think I can make all of that. Um, some of you will probably say, oh, that MC cable below eight foot is not protected and it, sh it can get damaged. Oh, true, it could. But really, ultimately, it's probably not because these are mechanics, they're fairly smart people. Um, uh, bottom line, uh, this is a really good application to show you guys in the field. Sometimes you might just have to look a little bit more to trust in yourself than an engineer to wire up a whole load of 20 to 30 amps. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, also, if you guys have any input on generators, some of you guys watch me, you're great generator guys. I will not say in any means that I am uh, a, a huge smart guy on how to wire up any kind of generator. I'm just learning myself on my RV with the 5500 KW and my 1500 watt um, portable right there, my Yamaha to um, um, my Cummings one that I have. So I'm still learning on both sides of the AC, DC side of that. Um, but yeah, if you have any other input on um, if a 3500 watt would work or 4000 kW for these guys, considering that the highest load I'm running is 16 amps and then when I put a load it might be at 20, that would be literally jumping my two Yamahas I have together and creating 3000 kW. I still think that that's not enough and it's going to pop one of them. So it probably has to have one solid unit on that as a portable. And any idea of what brand you think might work, um, I know there's Yamaha and Honda out there everybody uses. but uh, maybe a DeWalt or something that's going to be more for a motor load. Thanks guys for joining us. Hopefully that video wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed the code on that. Thanks.